Greetings, Earthling. I am Aota. I'm working on helping as many people as I can be happy, healthy, and wealthy. Read all the stories on HomeOffice.Studio and watch all the videos to get a very advanced, entertaining education. Welcome. I'm going to make another video about uh, Earth being a drug-free zone. I, you know, I, I quit using drugs 30 years ago, thank God, and uh, I believe that it's one of the, the greatest plagues f facing our generation of human nature and civilization, and I just wanted to make a video about that, you know, and plus I'm practicing making videos and trying to learn how to be more entertaining and talk better and l learn how to use this equipment a little bit better. I'm using uh, Open Office Impress to make this uh, video and uh, it's just a weird tool. We'll see if I'm, I'm practicing. You know, I, this is the first time I've really used it. I used it a couple of times where, but uh, it was just one deal. This time I'm going to try to go to other different ones you know so if i start this it, it, it starts that up okay see there you go cool huh so yeah i do believe that the the drug issue is uh very it's like the greatest threat to human civilization right now is drug abuse and drug trafficking and that we need to respond you know aggressively and, uh, you know, NBC, when I was in the Navy, they used to talk, we used to train about uh, nuclear, biological, and chemical warfare. And um, I believe that uh, the drug trafficking is basically, it's a chemical weapon being used against human nature and civilization. It, it, you know, it, it, uh, you know, they taste good and they cause insanity and death when used as intended. And you know, so and and it's really sinister. It's very you know, and it kind of you know, it's it's a it's a bad thing, and we need to fix it. You know, you know, all these homeless people on the people living on the streets and sleeping on the sidewalk and stuff like that. A large percentage of that is caused by drug abuse. You know, because people. You use the drugs and they just distort your mind and you got to stop it, man. It's just not something that's possible, you know, acceptable. You know, one of the things we got to do, the first thing we got to do is we got to slow down the drug abuse. You know, we got to use all different uh, means, you know, and we got to stop it. And then, uh, you know, stop the growth and, and then eliminate it gradually and as quickly as possible you know we got to use education we got to teach kids in school little kids elementary school kids the you know the true nature of drug addiction you know they're not stupid and you don't you know you got to put it in their level but you got to teach them here's what the drugs do it's physical and it's in the brain and we can fix it and explain it to them so that they understand what they're doing and that they you know and convince them not to start smoking cigarettes not to you know explain to them exactly what happens in their brain when when they use drugs and uh the treatment we we got to use every available means you know the most advanced scientific treatment for drug addiction you know to get people off of that and uh the police, they need to be very well trained because, you know, they need to not be, uh, you know, the police need to be able to, I, I believe in community policing, and that means the police can walk up and talk to people and have a normal conversation with the citizens of the people, you know. That they're and you know the idea of centuries having centuries that is the, ever since human nature you know I mean we've always had centuries and we always will have centuries to guard our village and you know whatever that is 
and it, this uh, hostility towards the police is just the criminals running wild. That's all that is, and we got to stop that, you know, and tr and treat the police with respect, and teach people to treat people with the police with respect, and the the police need to be taught about the drug addiction problem and tra trained to be able to get people into the treatment programs and stuff like that. And then we need to use military force. Our militaries, you know, I mean, if they're not doing that, then what the point, what's the point of having military if they're not going to protect us from this most violent crime? Drug trafficking is the most violent crime. There's nothing more violent than drug trafficking. It gets into your brain and it destroys your mind. That's what those drugs do, all of them, every single one of them. Now, and we need to put, use every available means to stop it. Education, drug treatment, the most advanced drug treatment, the you know very strict law enforcement, and military force if necessary. You know, and that's just the true facts in nature. You know, marijuana, everybody thinks, oh, marijuana is some mild drug. No, it's not. It's the worst drug of all. And it's not, it doesn't have the dramatic, you know, effects like uh, heroin or other ones, and methamphetamines and stuff like that. And, but it, uh, the way, you know, what mar THC does, which is the active ingredient in marijuana, is it mimics the neurotransmitter anandamide. The neurotransmitter anandamide is uh, the see with heroin and alcohol and cocaine and most drugs, uh, they're the circuitry that the, the dopamine circuitry and the serotonin circuitry that they interfere with is in the limbic system primarily in the limbic system, which is where our emotions are generated, which is. You know, that's pretty important and very damaging and harmful and all that. And it creates all these bad, terrible, you know, sociological effects. But it's, it's, it's interfering with your sense of emotion. Emotion is, you know, emo motion. It causes motion. You know, that's where our, you know, activity is generated. You know, that's our motives. You know, is uh, and so and that's not having that distorted by a drug is is insane. It's insane. The way that marijuana, where and and, and THC, uh, were in influence the brain and interfere with the brain is in the brain stem. Most of the anandamide receptors are in the brain stem, and there's also a cluster of them in the reproductive system. Anandamide means bliss. It's you know, and you know. So if you take the THC, it fits into the anandamide receptors, and so your brain thinks, oh, we've got a overloaded with anandamide, so it stops producing you know, the anandamide. That causes the withdrawal syndrome. Of, of, you know, and it's the same for every drug. Each drug affects a different, you know, chemical. You know serotonin or dopamine or whatever, but they, they, they fit into the receptors in the brain cells, in the neurons, have little molecules that these neurotransmitters fit into like a key. And that's in the, you know, and when you accumulate a whole bunch of that, it causes the next brain cell to fire, you know, and your whole brain is a, it's a uh, neuro, you know, it's a, a electrochemical Organism and and it all your whole state of consciousness depends on the recipe of chemicals you know anandamide and and dopamine and serotonin and hundreds of other chemicals and you know they need to be the right amount of each one and that generates your consciousness you know your sense of, you know there's hormones that go throughout your body that's all controlled by the brain and all this and it's all interactive and it's all extremely complex and putting these artificial drugs in there and is it just throws the whole thing out of balance you know and the the way when you take heroin and it you know starts 
disrupting the dopamine receptors and circuitry, it, what happens is you, you it suppresses the sense of pain. And um, that with with anandamide, it doesn't do that. You know, it's an analgesic, but what it does instead of suppressing the sense of pain, it suppresses the sense of compassion. So you still feel the pain; it just doesn't bother you as much. And this is where the really sinister part of this disease comes in, because you know the drug traffickers and the the people that are you know pushing the drugs they want you to use the marijuana because they know they're basically stealing the the material prosperity of life on earth you know and you know hoarding the wealth of of earth to themselves and the only way they could get away with that is by giving the people this drug that makes them, you know, that's why they call hashish, the root word of hashish is assassin, or one of the other, one, one of them, you know, that, that whole work, the, and the point of it is, is, you know, they would give the assassins a bunch of hashish, and they would get all stoned on hashish, and that would suppress their sense of their morals. So they didn't really care, you know, and they were willing to override their moral value of thou shalt not kill, which is a very important part of human nature too. And they could, you know, and they could override that by taking the hashish. It just kind of suppressed their sense of compassion and their sense of, you know, pain. You know, there's not so much their sense of pain. They, they still feel the pain. They just don't, it doesn't bother them. And I know this is true because I that was marijuana was one of my favorite drugs and I I can remember one day working and I was working with the wheelbarrow and I was carrying and my back it was just oh it was pain pain in my back you know and uh, at lunchtime we smoked a joint and after that I still felt the pain I could feel the pain that sharp pain in my back it just didn't bother me as much you know and I'm going like. And when I read that, when I went to college to be a drug rehab counselor and read that in the in a book, I'm going like, that's exactly right. That's exactly what it does. And I studied it, you know, and how these the THC fits into the anandamide receptors, and it's still throughout the whole body. And so the people that use it are sitting there thinking, you know they don't like what's going on in their life, but they it doesn't bother them as much because they get stoned. And the, it's like, you know, and there's so many other issues, you know, and it's, it's, it's a very sinister thing, you know, you know, how that we have, you can't drink and drive, you know, that's a serious crime. Drinking and driving is a very serious crime. Well, how about raising a kid? while you're stoned or running a business or government or any other thing while you're stoned. You know, marijuana stays in your system for like 30 days. You know, it takes 30 days to metabolize THC. Unlike alcohol and stuff where you basically metabolize it in a day or three days or whatever, you know, different one. Each drug has a different metabolize it. You know, the body metabolizes each drug differently. You know, and we just got to keep working on it, man. And that, that for the solutions to it is that we, for one thing, focus on solutions, not problems. You know, the drug. You know, the you got to admit about the addiction that it's a problem. You got to admit that you have a problem. But once you do that, then you need to start focusing on solutions and not so much, and don't stay focused on the problems. And um, one of my favorite exercises, and you don't even have to be a drug rehab, drug addict or trying to recover from drugs or anything like that to use Qigong, but it, it's my favorite exercise. It's a, it exercises your whole body and your whole including your soul and your mind and your every part of your being and and I like that it's part of my holistic perspective of life on earth and recovery and everything 
And um, and just get in the habit of doing that every single day. Because what you're trying to do is you're trying to replace these bad habits with good habits. That's the solution. It's, you know, it's focus on the solution. You focus on doing something good and healthy for yourself in your life. And just keep doing that every single day. And get in and create a new habit that is good for you to replace this old habit that is devastating to anyone who does it. And, uh, you know, and it takes a long time for the effects to cause the problems, but the problems are severe and they're not very fun to have to deal with. You know, so start practicing Qigong, start studying it, learn it, and, you know, some of the philosophy of Qigong and, and you know, because it's, it's good for you. You know, one of the things I like is, uh, you know, the Shaolin, you know, Qigong. And, and I study that and I listen to the videos and I practice the movements and uh, it's, it's good for me. And it puts me in a good frame of mind. You do that in the morning. You know, I say my Baha'i prayers first thing every morning is I say my Baha'i prayers. You know, and I go through that little set of prayers in the morning for the Baha'i faith. This is my religion. It's what I live, believe in. And, um, and then I, you know, after I finish that, I kind of meditate for a minute, you know, a couple, you know, five minutes or whatever. And then I get up and I, I right now I'm watching it on the video because I'm starting a new Qigong thing that I'm, I found and so I'm watching on the video to try to get the movements down eventually you will know, be able to do it without watching the video but and you just follow along just copy what they're doing you know you, you really do need to have a teacher eventually but you can start out just by copying people on the video you know and just following their instructions and go through it with well, the reason you need a, 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 a a person to teach you in person is because they can see when you're doing something wrong you know you know you you know you should have that elbow should be a little bit higher or lower or whatever you know things like that and so it's always good to have a teacher but you can start out by doing it uh, just following the examples on you know I use YouTube and I watch videos all the time about Qigong and and uh, what's another one? The one I've been watching in the last couple of days is uh, Lao Tzu uh, Taoism. You know, the act of not doing, you know, not trying, you know, and stuff. You know, it's just all that philosophy. You know, I study the philosophy of the East and the West. You know, I've studied Druidism and, and their philosophy and, and Anamkara and stuff like that, you know soulmates and friendship and you know I'm curious about that kind of stuff and spirituality I've studied every religion and I don't necessarily think everybody should be doing that the way I've done it because I've like read the Bible five times from start to finish the Quran four times the Bhagavad Gita many times and I've studied all these religions and all these natural healing systems like traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic medicine, and I, I've studied them for a lot. And it's not really practical for everybody to do that, you know. The main thing is, but I do recommend this, that you start with Chico, you know, and, and just get yourself a little seven-minute video and watch that every morning and just practice that every morning for seven minutes and along with all your other prayers, you know, and everything else that you do. And um, another thing is everybody has to be productive. Life on earth, you know, you have to be productive to live on earth. Not being productive is not healthy. It's, it's kind of a, it's a mental illness, actually, you know, because productivity is just part of human nature and civilization. You know, creative, God says, you know, God created man in the image of God. That means that he created us you know that means that human beings are creative and we do we have to exercise that for creativity we have to practice our creativity 
in some way. And it's going to be different for different people or everybody's going to have their own style of creativity, but everybody needs to be creative and everybody is creative and you can create things that are good for yourself and other people, or you can create things that are not so good. And, you know, and that's not, you know, you want to be productive and not destructive because you're either one or the other. There's no not being creative. You, you can't not be creative, actually. But you have, you have to be intentionally creative in order to, it's, it's something that it doesn't happen by accident. You know, civil, people are not born civilized. We have to be educated and trained to be civilized. And, and, we, and that's what we do. We get good at it. And that's what schools are for. That's what religion, religion, you know, causes civilization. You know, families, you know, families and religion and that whole one common faith. You know, everybody believes the same thing. And we have values that are all similar and we can understand each other. You know, the Tower of Babel effect is when everybody just makes up their own values and religion, you know, and there's there's no one common fate. That's the Tower of Babel effect. And that's the, uh, the end of civilization, you know, and we got to, so one common faith is, is, you know, sustainable civilization depends on one common faith. And, um, and family, you know, you got a family values, you got a, your family you, you, is indispensable. You know, that's uh, families. You know, the, it's, it talks about how language, you know, first there was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. You know, that language is the very basis of human consciousness. And religion and family and language, those are like three p pieces of human nature and civilization that are really important. And you should just study it, look at it, you know, seek out the truth and find out because you're going to have your own perspective, your own culture, wherever you come from and, you know, what church you went to and all that stuff is going to influence you know, and that's a good thing. That's okay. That's, you know, we don't need everybody to be the same, you know, and, but just, you have to take action and take responsibility for yourself and self-determination and self, um, you know, you know, God makes the rules, you know, find out, investigate and seek God and find out what the rules that God makes. I make the rules is is not that is not a good idea. I first time I ever said that I thought, oh wow, what a cool idea! You know, I make the rules in my life. No, that's that's a terrible idea. You know, that's that's the problem. You know, and what we really need to learn is find God makes the rules and follow those rules and practice them in our lives. That's the solution. That's the antidote to drug abuse and addiction and any other problems, you know, gambling or sexual misconduct of any kind or anything. You know, first of all, anybody can recover. There's no, you know, we never give up on anybody. Nobody's getting left behind, you know, the whole human race, you know. You, there, you do have to want to recover from whatever it is you're recovering from, you know, because we can't make anybody recover if they don't want that. You know, that's just the way things are. It's kind of like God says, uh, God loves everybody, you know, but in order for us to benefit from that love, we have to love God. You know, because it, it, it has no benefit. If, if we don't love God, then we, there, we don't benefit from God's love for us. Because he loves every single human being without exception. And loving God involves, true love involves, you know, submission to God. And practicing the rules that he reveals. And he, he reveals rules and they're... Everybody knows what they are. You know, I'm not any sorts of the rules of law or anything like that. I'm just a one individual human being trying to live life on earth and have fun and 
be prosperous and happy and healthy and wealthy and all that good stuff. And I recommend that you do that too. I recommend everybody does that. You know, what do we, you know, so in the past we had to survive. We had to work really hard to survive and live in this, you know, cold and heat and everything. And now we're, we have this advanced technology and we have robots doing most of the labor and all this. And so human beings are going to have to figure out ways of challenging ourselves. And I believe that, you know, self-improvement is going to be a big part of that. You know, improving yourself and achieving, you know, you're just going to have to do that. And be an artist, whatever it is you're doing, you know, be an artist, be a very high performance, whatever you're doing. You know, if you're a salesman, be a high performance salesman. If you're a musician, be a really great at it, you know, and just keep getting better and practicing and improving yourself no matter what you're doing and uh, get really good at it. Make sure you're adding value to society. You know, make you know, you make sure everybody gets a good deal trading with you. You know, you know, anytime anybody loses in a trade, then that's corruption. You know, not that's not business, that's corruption. And uh, so make sure everybody wins and, uh, you know, everybody gets, you know, benefits from every transaction, every business, every deal you make. Make sure everybody gets a good deal. Even people that aren't necessarily involved in the deal, you know, you don't want to be making deals with people that benefit the people who are involved in it, but it's harmful to everyone else or anything like that. You know, you got to, this one world unity is kind of like the next stage of evolution of human nature you know we've kind of gone through stages and stages of, you know different episodes of evolution rise and fall of civilizations and things like that life has evolved and now these human beings are terraforming earth from a wilderness into a garden and you know to me that's just that's part of human nature that's a good thing I mean that's what we're supposed to be doing and we're, that's what we are doing and where there's fits and starts and there's eight billion different agendas going on all at the same time and and it's scary sometimes and it's you know there's a lot of pain and suffering that involved sometimes too unfortunately but that it make it always makes us stronger no matter what we always learn we want we learn from our successes and our failures and hopefully we learn more from success, you know, and keep succeeding, but we also learn from our mistakes. And so keep striving to improve yourself. You know, that I'm reading this stuff about the Tao, and it's talking a lot about not trying to improve ourselves. And I go, what, what? So that's uh, something to think about. I think it is a good idea to study that and read that. You know, I've never really... I studied all these different philosophies, and I read the I Ching and the I and the and the 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 Tao. I read the Tao, and it's the one I did not like. That there was one sentence in that. It's like a three hundred page poem, and there's a one sentence in there where he says, "I think it, the Tao is older than God," and that was like, "Oops, red flag." You know, I know that's a bad idea. That's you know. Um, you know, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there isn't some good ideas in that whole 300 page document. And so, because I know I'm not perfect. And, uh, you know, I, I view most of those, like the Tao, the Confucius, and all that is more, Confucian and, and Lao Tzu are more like philosophers. They're, they're like Plato and and uh, those guys, Aristotle, you know, they're valuable. Their ideas are good ideas, and we need to learn from them. But, uh, you know, they're not manifestations of God like Buddha or Jesus or Muhammad or Moses or Abraham. Those are the manifestations of God who reveal the Word of God. And uh, so we learn and we seek the truth. And science and religion are complementary. 
aspects of the search for truth. You know, we either you got to have both to have a whole, you know, complete seeking the truth. You know, because either one without the other is a half truth. Science, religion. You know, religion is seeking the truth about spirituality. Science is seeking the truth about natural history. I mean, you need both of them. And they make sense. They, you know, I've studied them. Believe me, I know. We we know where Moses found. He was in Saudi Arabia, the mountain where Moses was up there in the temple where they built at the foot of the mountain, and the where they got the water out of the rock. We found out where all that stuff is over in Saudi Arabia, northwestern Saudi Arabia. We found the mountain, and it's pretty obvious that oh yeah, that's it. There, there, everything is right there, just where like the Old Testament describes it. And we know that you know, and other things different. You know, I think Gobekli Tepe is a big. Uh, important thing, uh, I believe, you know, I think Noah founded that to try to create the new civilization after the flood destroyed civilization, you know, the ice age ended, you know, the civilization Adam founded was, that's the, that was in, during the ice age, and all these stone megaliths that we find all over the world, and you know, we got all these different explanations, but I think they were built during the ice age, by the civil, it was a global civilization founded by Adam that lasted who knows how long. And then when the ice age ended and sea level rose, it flooded all the big coastal cities, you know, which would the big cities, that would be where the main cities are, just like New York, they're all right next to the ocean. They all got flooded and so the civilization collapsed into a dark age. And then after a while, Moses or Noah, you know, he landed there in Turkey, same area where Adam lived was Turkey, and it went, went eastern Turkey. When Adam left, Tur you know, the Garden of Eden went to the east. They went into Iran and founded the, that human civilization. But when when Noah floated around the Black Sea for however long, the first land he saw was Mount Ararat, and that's where they landed there in Turkey, and they ended up, I think, you know, and this is just pure speculation, but they founded Gobekli Tepe, and that's where civilization radiated out from there. <clears throat> and so, and that's this, this, the current civilization, but there's a new civilization started that was founded by Baha'u'llah, and this new civilization is causing the end of the, all the old civilizations because all those civilizations were kind of regional you know the christians and the muslims and the eastern asians each one had their own history and culture and now this new global civilization is arising throughout the planet earth and um and it was founded by baha'u'llah in the 1800s you know and that's uh, the 19th century, and it's it's that's what's next. You know, learn about it, study it, seek it out, and find out where it is because it's available, and start practicing this new civilization. You know, and then the new rule of law. It's a new, you know, wondrous new world order of Baha'u'llah. And there's detailed instructions about how to live long. It's not. You know, all these different religions like Moses and, and Jesus and Muhammad and Buddha and Krishna, they all say the same thing. Of course, they use different stories to explain it, but they're all teaching the same thing. You know, the Christians are saying be, be full of the Holy Spirit. The Buddhists are saying be empty of self. Well, that's two different ways of saying the exact same thing. You know, and so the whole point is, is just no, the you know, there it's all one re divine religion. It's all one. God is the source of all of those religions, and it evolved differently. Each culture and history has a different history and culture, and that's okay. And now we've reached this stage in the evolution of human nature and civilization where. This one global planet, this uh, global uh, the class one civilization, is 
uh, it's here now. And it's, to me, it's a great idea. It's, it's amazing. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. And we need to work and we got to make it work. It's not, it, it's not happening on, you know, by accident. It's happening on purpose. We have to make it happen and we are making it happen. Gradually, we're making progress and that's a good thing, man. You know, and don't use drugs. You know, drugs, you know, using drugs degrades human consciousness, both acutely and chronically, you know, is using, you know, intoxication is, is uh, harmful. And, uh, you know, and some of the damage is, is permanent. It, you know, it, can, it, it damages your brain permanently. So don't do that. You know, and don't do anything harmful. Practice harmlessness in your life and have fun and, uh, you know, create a wonderful adventure on the planet Earth while you're here, you know. Peace be with you.